Now, while not so much a problem here in Tasmania, root lesion nematodes cost Australian grain growers over $250 million each year. In the northern grain region, where they're widely distributed, they've caused $45 million in lost wheat production alone. Ground Cover TV went north to investigate what's being done to combat the cost of these destructive, minute organisms. Root lesion nematodes are microscopic, thread-like organisms that live in the soil, burrowing into the roots of susceptible plants, reducing the plant's uptake of moisture and nutrients. We're standing here in a wheat paddock on thousands, if not billions, of nematodes. Because nematodes can only be seen under a microscope, you might not know you have them. A lot of crops don't show the symptoms. We can see symptoms in wheat, in some of the intolerant varieties, but if you're growing barley, sometimes even chickpeas, um, you might not see uh, reliable symptoms in there. They might be small, but the cost can be hefty. In uh, wheat crops, you can lose up to about 50% in yield for an intolerant wheat variety, and in chickpea, you're looking at about 20%. Nematodes are extremely common, with at least one of the two problem species showing up in the majority of paddocks in a survey of northern cropping regions. We found that in, in those 800 paddocks, 67% of them had Pratolenchus thornii and 32% had Pratolenchus neglectus. And then you find 26% of paddocks had both species present. Even drought won't kill off these microscopic munchers. In a year that is very, very dry, these nematodes can um, do this really clever thing. They dehydrate and they just wait in the soil until there are favourable conditions to feed and reproduce again. But there are wheat varieties that tolerate nematodes without significant loss, continuing to grow and yield well despite the presence of nematodes. Working out the level of nematode tolerance of wheat varieties is the purpose of this national variety trial on Alex Gwynn's property. We take... Um all the commercial wheat varieties in Australia, plus all the leading experimental lines, and um, test them, their tolerance for the nematode. The damage caused to intolerant varieties grown in nematode-infested soil is evident at the trial site. So what we're seeing here is large gaps between the rows. There's, uh, the plants don't have a lot of tillers, and you get this lower leaf yellowing and a little bit of wilting. Overall stunted plants. And this is a good example of a, a more tolerant variety. So we've got huge yeah, leaves, it's a healthy looking plant, lots of tillers, and as these grow they're going to continue to fill up those uh, rows. Planting tolerant varieties allows crops to grow and yield well, but it only mitigates the damage for that crop. One of the difficulties with tolerance is that while the wheat may yield well, the nematodes may still multiply in the root system. To reduce nematode numbers requires a crop that's resistant to nematodes, with fewer roots available for food or reproduction, nematode numbers will drop. That's why rotation incorporating resistant crops is important in nematode-infested paddocks. You can never get rid of them, but if you can keep them down to a low level, then you're going to see less damage in crops that are intolerant or ones that will lose yield. Taking a soil sample is one of the only ways growers can be sure whether or not they have nematodes and in what numbers. But you don't need equipment this size to do it. If you've got special tools to take uh, soil samples, well and good, but a shovel and a plastic bag is, is going to do the job. So I would recommend sampling soil down to about 30 centimetres and doing that in a number of uh, places across the paddock and then uh, submitting those to a commercial sampling service uh, like Didi or the Predictor B service in South Australia and uh, either service will be able to tell you the, the number of nematodes and the species that are present. Once you know what you're dealing with, you can make decisions on management, but it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. You can have resistance to one species and that same variety will be susceptible to the other species, and the same goes with tolerance. Sorghum's a good crop to grow in rotation with wheat where you've got Pratolenchus thornii, but if you've got neglectus, sorghum is susceptible, so the numbers will increase. And it's a similar story with mung beans. They're susceptible to Pratolenchus um, thornii, so they're not good to include in rotation when you're trying to manage these Pratolenchus thornii nematodes. But if you do have Pratolenchus neglectus, mung bean is resistant, so it's a good crop to grow in, um, in rotation. If it all sounds too complicated, don't despair. GRDC is funding a new project which should lead to simpler and higher yielding solutions. What we're hoping to do is combine these genes together and uh, get resistance and tolerance to both species. 
the nematode is actually rife in many of the poorer countries of the world that have got no concept of what they're dealing with. So varieties of wheat or whatever that we can develop in Australia have probably got a huge international benefit as well. In the meantime, for growers like Alex Gwynn, planting tolerant wheat varieties in rotation with resistant crops prevents nematodes from eating away at the profits. This is a good um, area for farmers to uh, target in uh, management of diseases because there's something you can do about it. There's been a lot of work done with tolerant wheat varieties, so just choosing a tolerant wheat variety, if you know which species of nematode you have, um, can mean that you can double your wheat yields. Root lesion nematodes was also the subject of a driving agronomy podcast which can still be downloaded from GRDC's website where you can also find a fact sheet on parasitic nematodes.